Once again, Japan springs into action to make all of your augmented reality dreams come true. The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant found relatively high levels of radioactive water in a ditch on Thursday. Tokyo Electric Power Company says it discovered that collected water contained 1,900 becquerels per liter. The company's warning level is 3,000 becquerels per liter. The utilities officials collected the water from the ditch in the storage tank area. The tanks store highly radioactive water. TEPCO workers have checked the tanks but found no evidence of a leak. They also suspect the water spilled into the port through the drainage channel. Last month, TEPCO found radioactive water in the same drainage channel. The density briefly soared to more than 10 times the normal figure. When the mainstream press and the government says nobody could have predicted this, they're lying through their fucking teeth. Farmers in northeastern Japan have spent the past four years restoring land that got contaminated in the nuclear accident. But some are stuck with a problem that continues to grow. They're struggling to get rid of grass that's classed as low-level radioactive waste. Junichi Sakuma runs a dairy ranch about 70 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nu nuclear plant. He sets aside contaminated hay, but the sacks keep piling up. The law requires local authorities to dispose of waste if its radioactivity is below a certain level. But officials responsible for Sakuma's farm have yet to come up with a plan. You're going to need a bigger boat. NHK spoke with authorities across the affected region to grasp the scale of the problem. Only about a third of municipalities said they'd found ways to dispose of the waste, and only a handful said they'd finished the job. Officials said many residents would not allow them to burn the waste or dispose of the ash in their neighborhoods, and they pointed to a lack of incinerators. But that, re that, that leads us to another problem, because what's happening now, as I'm told, is that the Japanese government are trucking radioactive material from the Fukushima disaster area, where it's contaminated, all over Japan. And even as far south as the south of Japan, we're now getting reports of, of uh, radioactivity, uh, radioactive material being taken all the way to the south of Japan to be burned. Now, what possible reason could there be for burning it as far away as that? I'll tell you the reason. It's really quite sinister and horrifying. The reason is this, that eventually when these children start to die from leukemia, from other cancers, from heart disease, from whatever, their parents are going to want to go into court. They're going to want to sue the Japanese government and they're going to want to have to say, these, in order to do that, these children were contaminated and that's why they've got high levels of cancer. But of course, the only way that they can say that they've got high levels of cancer is to have a control group in an area that's not contaminated for example, the south of Japan. So I believe that the project to take this material and burn it all over Japan is to destroy all of Japan, is to increase the, the, the cancer rate in the whole of Japan so that there will be no control group to which you can compare these children in the Fukushima area. So that's that point. Sakuma says the amount of contaminated waste on his farm has grown to 50 tons. He says the plastic sacks have holes in them and that animals have been getting at the grass. The contaminated materials are just left at small farms like mine. I want the government to get rid of them as soon as possible. Officials with the central government say the low-level waste can be treated the same way as ordinary garbage. They plan to help local authorities spread this message to residents. And they're offering subsidies to help municipalities tackle the problem. People in Fukushima have been struggling to deal with radioactive waste left by the nuclear accident four years ago. Now, the Japanese government says it's made some progress toward securing storage for contaminated soil. But the agreement they reached with leaders in Fukushima is just a drop in the bucket. NHK World's Noriko Okada explains. I decided to allow radioactive soil and other waste to be brought into the towns. The goal is to clean up the environment and recover from the disaster as soon as possible. The governor of Fukushima Prefecture and the mayors of two towns met with the Japanese environment and reconstruction ministers. The Fukushima officials said they will permit shipments of radioactive waste into the towns and allow it to be kept in intermediate storage facilities. 
I'd like to offer my appreciation for making this extremely difficult decision. The government will do everything in its power to complete this project and to reconstruct Fukushima. Scenes like this can be found around Fukushima. Heaps of black bags sit on the sides of roads and in the backyards of houses. They hold radioactive soil and other waste collected during decontamination work. The waste sits in more than 75,000 places around the prefecture, including residential areas. The piles of waste have slowed down the entire rebuilding effort. Last September, leaders in Fukushima agreed to allow the Japanese government to begin building intermediate storage facilities. Construction began this month. Officials in Tokyo hope the facility will start receiving the first shipment of waste by the end of next month. The government has been planning to build intermediate storage sites covering 16 square kilometers. But so far, people in Fukushima have given permission to use only two small plots of land. These sites will be able to hold only one-tenth of one percent of the accumulated waste. Government officials have been negotiating to purchase property from more than 2,300 landowners. But none of them have agreed to sell. Many of them say they don't want to give up their family land. I suppose the intermediate storage facilities are necessary, but it is not right that this plan move forward without reaching a conclusion in discussion with the local landowners. There is another reason landowners are dissatisfied. Once the intermediate facilities are up and running, the government will have 30 years to transfer the waste out of the prefecture for final disposal. Officials say they will study ways to accomplish this. But so far, they haven't provided any specific information about where the waste might end up. Noriko Okada in... So we want to take the children away anyway into some safe area. That's, that's, the, that, that's what we want to do. But the second thing that we can do, and this is also quite important, is we can try and block the material. We can try and block the absorption of the cesium and the absorption of the strontium-90 and the plutonium and the other substances that are not being measured, incidentally. We have to wait a minute now because there's a train passing. I'm sitting on a children's playground here in um, Sweden. This is in Stockholm. And I decided to talk to you from here, from Stockholm, where there is a significant amount of radioactivity as well, I have to say, in the, in the Baltic Sea. I measured this myself, but that's another question. So the second thing we can do is we can try and block the ingress of the radioactivity into the child's body. Now we know that we can do this with iodine because iodine goes to the thyroid gland, we give them stable iodine, or at least we're supposed to, it turns out the Japanese government didn't, um, and then it stops the bad iodine, the radioactive iodine, from binding to the same sites. And this, you can do the same thing with the other radionuclides. For uranium and plutonium and strontium-90, which are the most serious, and all of which they're not measuring, incidentally, and none of which can be measured with a whole body counter because they're alpha emitters or beta emitters, we can block that attachment to the DNA by giving large amounts of calcium and magnesium, which binds to the DNA and keeps the, the, the strontium and the uranium off the DNA. So that's one thing that these children can do. They can take a tablet every day of stable calcium. And so we are going to produce tablets which contain stable calcium, which we, call, which we will supply cheaply at the cost of production to parents of these children so that they can take these tablets and block the ingress of, of these substances. And we're also working on another tablet which will block the ingress of cesium-137. Now in order to do this, we have set up a, an organization in Japan called the Christopher Busby Foundation for the Children of Fukushima. And it has a website and it's all in Japanese and it's all being done by a colleague of mine who contacted me from Japan called James, called James Grand. Uh, in addition to this, we are going to purchase a large number of highly sophisticated radiation measuring devices 
for, uh, from Europe, from suppliers in Europe and, and suppliers in the Ukraine. And we're going to make these um, devices available to the parents of children to measure the concentrations of these substances in the food and also to supermarkets and we will measure the substances ourselves. We will set up a laboratory in, 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 in Japan so that people can bring these substances to the laboratory and find out the truth about the concentration of radionuclides in these substances. So these are the things that we want to do and we want you to help us to do this in any way that you can. This is an operation to save the children of Fukushima because we do not believe that the Japanese government is doing anything to save the children of Fukushima. They are operating on a principle which is the principle of saving not the children of Fukushima but the international nuclear industry. And this is disgraceful. Thank you for listening.